Hey, good morning, Heights family, and thank you for joining us online. As you guys are coming on, we're just gonna hang out for a little bit and talk to you. My name's Seth. I'm Tori. And we're so glad that you've joined us here, and we hope that these messages and, and um, our services online have been an encouragement to you and your family, as it has been to us. I know it has been to us, for sure. Oh yeah, we've loved it. Yeah. And we just wanna say thanks to everyone who participated in the fun run this weekend. Uh, awesome time, and we're just really grateful for all of you for participating. We hope you had a good time with it. Uh, and just enjoyed being outside with your family. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the things that we've kind of been talking about um, in this in this new season of uh, being at home a little bit more is um, is food because everybody loves food. Food. Like, <laughs> if you don't like food, something's wrong with you. <laughs> but um, since restaurants and stuff haven't been open and stuff, or it's been a little bit harder to get access to them, especially since you're supposed to be staying at home anyway. Um, what are some what are some different foods that you've tried or some tried to make or something like let us let us know in the comments as you're watching like what are some foods some new foods that you've tried to cook and that were good and maybe some of the ones that weren't so good <laughs> give us a heads up so we know so we know not to make those yeah you can even share recipes with us in the comments That'd hey be that, fun. oh that would be a great idea we can all try each other's foods yep absolutely super fun. i know i'm running out of ideas of what to make because We've been cooking so much more. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know, we didn't eat out much before, but I feel right. like I'm cooking seven meals a day now because everybody's <laughs> home and like, yeah. So yeah. hook me up. Yeah. <laughs> what have you guys been having? Oh, we've tried we've tried a couple different things. So our go-to right now is this awesome, um, this awesome pizza recipe. It's a pizza crust with just mozzarella cheese and almond flour. Oh. And it's amazing. It's so like the new cauliflower pizza. Kind of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're like, we we even had it, like we even had some um, today that was uh, that was barbecue chicken and like with the barbecue sauce. It was amazing. amazing. It was so good. That I wouldn't have gotten that at Domino's <laughs> or Pizza Hut. Like it wouldn't have tasted that good. And it was amazing. Hey, that's the thing though. I feel like. I'm learning at home. I can make all of this great food mm. that tastes even better than going yeah. out to eat. So. <laughs> yep. Support your local restaurants, but right. also cook it up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. What about we, you guys? What are you trying? Gosh, well, yesterday we made pizza waffles. Oh. Yeah. So we just get like pizza dough and then put whatever you want in it and put it in the waffle maker, and that's a hit with everybody. But we've tried all kinds of things. You know, I told you last week, we've been traveling around the world with the girls. So we've been trying different foods from different places. Uh, I think my favorite was we made butter chicken. I normally don't love Indian food because I don't like curry, but this mm -hmm. was amazing. Mm -hmm. Super yummy. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. I'll share the recipe. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Please share it with us. And you guys share your, share your recipes with us too. Because uh, we, we need some new ideas. We all need some new new ideas. We can help each other out. Another thing we were talking about um, this morning as we get ready to kick off our service was um, places that we um, we were looking forward to vacationing. You know, when, when all this pandemic thing kind of fades away and it's a distant memory, things open <laughs> back up. Where's that place you're going? Are you wanting to go to the beach or to the cabins in the woods? <laughs> yeah. Let us know that too in the, in the comments below. Um, places that you guys are looking forward to going um, when things open back up. Tori, you guys, you guys talked about going anywhere? Oh yeah, <laughs> we're going to Disney. Oh yeah, <laughs> going to Disney. <laughs> <laughs> we go a lot. Disney. Those of you who know me, I love Disney, and I've already already missed one of my trips for the year, and so we are really excited. We have a couple of trips planned, but obviously it'll be dependent on what things look like. Uh, but we are excited to get back down to Florida. Yeah. Absolutely. Go hang out with Mickey. <laughs> what about you guys? Um, we were talking a little bit about going just to some local places, like just not anywhere far. Um, we actually got, um, we did the, the really smart thing and got Silver Dollar City passes at the beginning of the year. You know, when they're like the best price, the best bang for your buck. And um, yeah, we haven't been. Yeah, you, know, you, got they're good, you got a good deal there. <laughs> so, I mean, we, we were looking forward to that. Um, we love we love Silver Dollar City and just the it's the, the whole atmosphere. I've gone there a lot since we okay. did. Yeah. What's your but, favorite thing about Silver Dollar? The, the, the Silver, Silver Dollar. dollar city. Steal your Dollar City. Silver. I mean Silver. <laughs> <laughs> um, personally, I love 
um, like I love the the crafts craftsmanship there. I love going around and just watching like like the the, the glass blowers and the, um, the knife makers and just, I, I could just hang out there for hours. Like I remember, like even as a kid, I just like sit and stand there and just watch these guys work. I have to get so, like no one there's you, you don't see that kind of work and that craftsmanship anymore. And it's kind of cool to see it all in one. It is. It's like, one, it's one like place. you're going back in time when you go there. Yeah, cool. absolutely. It, like it, tra it transports you back in time, and so that's kind of cool. I do have a really funny story about one of the rides, though, um, <laughs> because because I do love rides. I love love roller coasters. So I haven't been I haven't been on the new ride, the Time Traveler, but I have been on Powder Keg, and it's that one that like shoots you out. So. I was on that ride the first time my dad was on it, and we we get ready to go, and I, and I knew what was coming, but he didn't. <laughs> and so this thing shoots off, the fire goes out the spout, whatever, and it gets really hot in there. My dad flips a lid, like his face <laughs> just goes, ah! <laughs> I will forever have that memory ingrained on my brain. Oh, those uh, are the best. <laughs> Was the best we went uh, we haven't ridden a lot of the rides there because we normally have the girls when we go uh -huh. but we did go with some other some friends of ours as families together and so we had the husbands watch the kids and uh, Ashley had been telling me oh my favorites the swings and so in my mind I'm like oh the swings you know like the, the nice, nice relaxing. little relaxing <laughs> swings and so we get in there and I hear this giant like sound like a big axe and I'm like what did you just take me on <laughs> I think I gripped her leg so hard the entire time, and I don't remember the last time I screamed that loud. Oh my goodness. I'm traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> I was not ready for not that. not getting on the swings ever again. <laughs> no, swings are now ruined. I can't <laughs> even go to the park. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, let us know, guys, what, what places you guys, you all are looking forward to going to on vacation. Because, uh, you know, someday this, this stuff, okay, this stuff is going to fade away. Yep. I get to wear my ears again. Yep, that's right. Don't be surprised yeah. if I start wearing them to church because yeah. I'm really missing out. <laughs> yeah, speaking of church, we also just want to invite you back. Um, May 24th, we're opening back up, having our services here at 9.30 and 11. Um, you should be hearing some, some, getting some stuff in the mail and hearing some, um, some video announcements too from us as well, but just want to throw that out there as well. We're looking, we're, we're excited and looking forward to having everybody back. Um, yeah, but be smart. If you're not feeling well, please, please stay at home. And there'll be safety and health precautions in place, but we're just excited to get to see everyone's half faces again. Yep, absolutely, <laughs> <your> absolutely. <laughs> well, speaking of yeah. church, yeah, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's, Let's do have this. some church. Welcome to the Heights.
Heights Church family. We have been missing you all and hope to get together with you soon. Blessings. Hey friends. Justin and Kelly here. We just want to say that we miss you and we hope to see you soon. Hey church family, we miss you. Can't wait to see you on campus. Hello. Hey Heights family, we miss you and we can't wait to see you. <laughs> hey Heights family, we can't wait to see you again in a few weeks. And we are so excited to be together again. <laughs> Good morning church family and welcome to the Heights. We're so glad that you're here with us. Uh, before we get started, I want to bring out two important notes to you. First off, we have an online Connect card, and we ask everyone, if you would, please fill that out. And uh, it has a great place for you to put your prayer requests and also any needs that you might have. We want to be your church family. Also, too, uh, we have what we call our message map that we encourage you to download so that you can follow along with our message today. Now, today we have a special service for you. Uh, it's called 5x5, Five Five, where we have five different speakers who will speak for five minutes. Uh, about a topic that we pre-selected for them. And I want to encourage you to uh, root them on, uh, share this service uh, in your feed, in your Facebook feed with your friends, and follow along with us. So today we're going to be talking about following Jesus means, and here we go. What's up? My name's Andrew Bunn. Super stoked to be here. Uh, today we're just going to talk about following Jesus means looking from God's perspective. He sees things different uh, from a different viewpoint than us. Um, I think it's easy for us to um, only rely on what we can see or what we can control because it's comfortable. We all like to be comfortable. But if we stay in this mindset of, I don't want to leave anything that's comfortable, uh, we'll never get to fulfill uh, our calling through Christ. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love Him to those who are called according to his purpose. We need to be able to trust his perspective on issues, knowing he's got our best at heart. He might, you might not be able to see in the moment, but that's how, that's how your character builds. I think it comes down to this question, you know, can you trust that God knows exactly what he's doing? Can you trust that he's got your best at heart? I had to go through this um, this summer, I, this past summer, I had a neck injury, um, it was really hard. I couldn't, I couldn't do any athletic activity all summer. I had just to sit out um, and watch everybody else play, watch everybody work. Um, as, a, as, a, as a team captain, um, I didn't feel like I was doing my part. I felt like I was letting everybody down because uh, I couldn't be out there with them. Uh, but through this, uh, God taught me a thing called servant leadership. Because um, I think when everybody just thinks of just leaders, they think of Leaders, but I think servant leadership takes it another step forward of actually serving the people um, you're leading. To, you're leading. So, an example like uh, help being the water boy uh, for when they're playing, or uh, recording practices, or being an assistant coach for a while to help you know the freshmen on some footwork that they might not be used to. I got to learn um, through my injury uh, the the power of servant leadership and helping uh, to help my team. Um, but through, through football, it also taught me a big thing about identity, <laughs> that my identity was wrapped up so much in, you know, my performance that when I couldn't train, you know, when I couldn't, when I couldn't hit the ball carrier, I, I was devastated. I was depleted. Um, but, you know, through this experience, um, I realized that, you know, my, my identity is through Christ and Christ alone, you know, and if I don't play another snap of football, you know what, I'm Okay. I mean, it's not a big deal because football is just a part of my life. It's not, it's not my whole life. And, you know, because of these experiences, my faith grew and grew. Um, and about two weeks before my junior year started, I rededicated my life to Christ. I got rebaptized. Um, and one of the big things God taught me through this is you can have all the plans in the world, uh, but his plans are always superior. And so you can just look at, you kind of have a choice. Uh, you can look at things our way, how the way we want them to happen, or we can just look at it through God's perspective. Uh, from my injury, I was, I was able to come back, and it was a great season, one of the best uh, teams to go through the school. It was just an awesome experience. 
Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah teaches us that ultimately he will know he knows more than we'll ever know. And he might he might do some stuff that we don't understand, but we gotta trust that his ways are higher. And so it all leads down to this question uh, that will help guide your life and what you do. Are you willing to look through God's perspective? Hi, I'm Tori, and following Jesus to me means peace. So I want to talk to you about three ways that God gives us peace and how we can receive it from him. Peace when the storm is raging. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. Psalms 107, 28 and 29. I love that verse. And it reminds me of one of my other favorite parts of the Bible, where we see Peter walking out on the water to meet Jesus. So let's imagine this for a moment. The wind is picking up. It's starting to get dark. The waves are getting bigger. And if you've ever been on a boat when the storm is rolling in, I'm sure you can relate to the disciples at this point. The fear is rising, the anxiety is creeping in, and then they see a ghost walking out toward them on the water. But I love what Peter does in this moment. He calls out to the figure and says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come. And in one word, Peter recognizes the voice of Jesus, leaves everything that feels natural behind and steps out onto the water to go toward him. To receive peace, we also need to know his voice. Just like a child who's lost in a large crowd, hearing the sound of their daddy, they feel peace, they feel safe. In the same way, when we hear God's voice, we're reminded we're safe and we're not alone. The second way is peace when the war is waging. So in 2 Chronicles, there's this really awesome battle victory story with King Jehoshaphat and Judah. And a couple of nations had come together and they were going to attack him. But God said to him, I got this. He said, you won't need to fight in this battle. Just stand strong in your places and you will see the Lord save you. 2 Chronicles 20, 17. Jehoshaphat trusted that God would do what he said he was going to do and he worshiped him. But here's the kicker. He worshiped him before God ever even did anything. And he trusted God so much so holy that he sent out as the front line of battle worshipers into the war. To receive God's peace, we need to trust him. And God did exactly what he said he was going to do. They didn't even have to fight the battle to win. The other nations turned against each other and Judah re reaped the benefit of everything they'd left behind. We need to trust God that much that he is who he says he is, that he is in a financial war, our provider. And in an emotional war, he's our comforter. And in a physical war, he's our healer. And in a relational war, he's our mender. And the third way is peace when the mind is racing. I'm sure you may have heard this verse. It's a refrigerator verse, and it's a great one to remember. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 4 through 6. Now there's a reason that we pray in Jesus' name. It shows admittance that he is in control and we are not. That he has full power and authority and we don't. And it's a way to submit ourselves to his will. To receive peace, we must deny ourselves. When I was in Uganda on a mission trip, we were bombed one night while eating dinner. And immediately my mind began to race uh, through all the chaos of, oh my gosh, what's happening? Am I gonna die? How are we gonna get out of here? Have people died? What's coming next? And my mind was just racing, the thoughts were racing, and I couldn't even form words for prayer. And even if I could have formed words, they wouldn't have been enough. They would have been inadequate for that situation. And so I just began to, to mutter the name of Jesus over and over and over again. And in that moment, just by speaking his name, I was filled with peace. Not because the situation had been resolved, but because I knew who held my future and I didn't need to worry anymore. We must deny ourselves 
and admit that God is in control and allow him to be in control of our lives to receive peace. And we need to decide who's going to be in charge because when I am trying to run my life, it's chaos. But when Jesus is in control, it's peace.
Good morning. My name is Seth, and following Jesus means being filled with joy. When I think of following Jesus, I tend to think of the do's and don'ts that Jesus asks of us and, and the rules of following him. And um, I think those things are good, but, but I lose the freedom that's associated with the abundant life that he has for us. You see, even in the last week that he was with his disciples, Jesus had these words to offer that are found in John chapter 15. It says, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. You see, Jesus came to give us life and a joy that is fulfilling. But why don't we always feel that? I think that there's really three main areas that I found in my life personally um, that affect my joy. And I think they'll hit home for you too. So let's jump into it this morning. The first one is this, my circumstances. Um, I love this verse found in Ecclesiastes 7, 14. It says, when times are good, be happy. But when times are bad, consider this, God has made the one as well as the other. You see, when life is good, we're full of joy. We're happy automatically. Um, we don't have to have someone to prod us to say, hey, be happy. But when times are bad, watch out. Our emotions tank and we get um, filled with fear, doubt, anger, sadness. They were just upset. And I think the neat thing is that throughout scripture, um, there's words of encouragement that are spoken um, to our bad times. Um, take um, this verse in James, for example. Um, it says this, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. You see, in the bad times, when we experience these hardships, um, we can have joy because we know that the testing of our faith, this testing, these bad times, is producing a stronger faith, a faith that perseveres. And in the end, it's going to make us mature and complete, not lacking anything. My second point is this, my possessions or lack of. Um, this point really focuses on discontentment versus contentment. You see, when I'm looking at the things that I have or the things that I don't have, um, it creates in me a sense of anxiety and stress and worry. Um, and I lose the abundant joy and the life that's found only in Christ. When I think of possessions, I, um, I think of the, the Bible character, King Solomon. Um, he's known for having great wealth um, and also a wealth of knowledge and wisdom. And we see in Ecclesiastes, he writes these words. He who loves money will not be satisfied with money, nor he who loves wealth with his income. This also is vanity. You see, in this verse, I think we can replace the words money and wealth with anything. We can replace it with cars, a fancy house, a relationship. You see, these, these things, though, they will all end in dissatisfaction, except for one thing. And that brings me to my third point. That's my salvation. See, a relationship with Jesus gives us an everlasting joy that will always satisfy. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 1. It says this, Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. I personally struggle with this point the most. Um, specifically in high school, and even, even today, um, I struggle with living a legalistic, li legalistic life. And what I mean by that is I, I strive to, to do the things that Jesus calls me to do. And um, in doing that, I lose sight of Jesus himself. And I focus on the commandments and the commands rather than the one who's giving them. And I think in, in all that striving and um, and trying to reach perfection, I, in a way, I'm trying to earn my salvation. And, and that's not life-giving. There's no joy in that. You see, in doing that, um, I, try, I try to earn and reach the one thing that I know I can't get on my own. And that's wholeness, a restoration um, uh, with God. And even as Peter writes these words, that this salvation that we're given... Man, it's filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy because it's the end result of our faith. And you know, we can walk in joy all the time 
because of this salvation, regardless of our circumstances and regardless of our possessions. And you, these three points, they really bring up one main question, and that's where is our focus? You see, our focus could be on ourselves, what we have, our lives, our possessions, or it could be on God and what he has to offer us in the gift of salvation. I wanna leave us with this, this answer to the question of how. How can we do this? And um, I find these words in 1 Thessalonians 5, um, verses 16 and eight through 18 really helpful. It says this, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And we can do these things because of the joy that comes through our salvation. Hi, my name's Addie, and following Jesus to me means intimacy. So growing up, I always had this innate feeling of never truly belonging. And I think being adopted was just another source to this issue for me. Um, and these feelings really manifested themselves into a fear and controlled a lot of my thoughts and actions in years to come. Um, and in these feelings and fears, I discovered God's first intimate character trait to me. And that was him stepping into the role of my best friend. So I remember burrowing down into my comforter as far as I could and talking to God about my day and what I was feeling and scared of and hoped and dreamed for. Um, and through this, my relationship with him really transcended. And now as a young woman, I see him in a lot of roles in my life. And he's a lot of things to me, but I still come back to him being my best friend. And it really is the backbone of my relationship with him. And I kind of wanted to talk on that idea today that intimacy is the base and foundation of your relationship with Christ. And it's who you are with him when no one else is around. Um, and so, you know, we talk about our faith in um, words like it's a journey and it's a walk of faith. And I just wanted to throw another idea into that mix that it's a quest. You know, we rely on trust and faith um, in um, not knowing what's next um, with him and it, as a quest. And a quest has questions. And so one way we can navigate our intimacy with him and our spiritual walk with him is having um, questions. And God initiates those questions with you to grow in intimacy with you. So I wanted to pull three questions out of scripture today that God is asking us. Um, so the first one is in Genesis chapter 3, verse 11. God asks Adam and Eve, where are you? And so they have just sinned and eaten from the tree, and they know they've sinned, and so they're shameful and they're hiding. And he asks, where are you? Um, and the second question is later on in that chapter, um, God asks, who told you that? And so he's referring to the tree again, and he's asking who told you that you could eat from the tree that he specifically asked them not to eat from. And the third question I wanted to pull out was from John chapter 1, verse 38. Um, Jesus is walking, and the disciples are following after him, and he turns to them and asks, what are you seeking? And so in all three of these questions, um, God and Jesus, they already know the answers to these questions. Um, they're not asking for the knowledge sake for them. Um, and that's kind of where we go sometimes in our mind with um, intimacy with God is, you know, he already knows what I've done. He already knows what I'm thinking and what I'm going to do. Um, but again, he's, they're not asking these for their benefit. They're asking these um, as you using an avenue to connect with them um, and grow spiritually with them and be vulnerable and honest in answering these. Um, and so I do believe that God is asking us, where are we? You know, where are we emotionally and mentally and relationally in this season of life or even just this day? Um, and he is asking us, who told you that? Um, who told you to believe this way and to think this way and to believe the lies about yourself or these lies about other people? Um, and lastly, um, what are you seeking? You know, are you seeking what's right in front of you in the world and what you see? Are you seeking your flesh and those desires? Or are you seeking first the kingdom of God like he's calling us to? Um, and so I just wanted to kind of close today with that intimacy is a two-way street. And um, we don't want to leave it all one-sided. Um, and, you know, while we are gifted salvation and 
all we're called to do is respond to that salvation and accept it. Um, once we are saved, we have faith and we can take that faith a step farther into the intimacy um, and ask God questions as well. Um, you know, you're not questioning God, but you're simply asking him questions. Um, and that is a great way to grow in intimacy with Christ is answering questions and asking questions. Um, and so I just want to encourage you guys today to seek God and who he is through the word and to seek him in conversational prayer with those questions. And lastly, to be vulnerable enough and honest enough to answer those questions that God is asking you.
Hi guys, I'm Kyle Smith, and following Jesus means opening up, at least to me. Imagine, for instance, that you are in lockdown. I think we can probably all imagine that. You've been living free. You have loved and been loved. You have traveled, you've enjoyed your life, and then all of a sudden everything's taken away from you and you're in lockdown. Prior to a few months ago, we probably couldn't really truly imagine what it means to be unallowed to be opened. But oftentimes, at so many ways in my relationship with Jesus, I would put my relationship on lockdown to pursue my own stuff, to run my own life. I would lose focus and put my heart and soul in lockdown. I would cast Jesus aside because what he was asking me to do, the next thing was too challenging. I had too many doubts. I had too many fears. I was too scared. And I didn't put my trust in his might and his power to get me there. But ultimately, what he wanted me to do was have a full life and an abundant life and trust him. In Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8, it says, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom, sa whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. I'm not a plumber. Here am I, send me. Yesterday, while trying to replace the faucet in our kitchen, I was tightening the very last thingy. Yes, I am a professional plumber. Anyway, I put too much pressure on the other thingy, and it broke. The other thingy. And water went everywhere. Uh, this PVC pipe broke. I escaped the waterboarding from inside the cabinet. And uh, in my fountain, uh, ran down the hallway and shut a valve off, hoping it would be the right one. And it happened to be the right one to shut off the fountain of terror that I was afraid would drown my entire house. I'm being a little dramatic. I am a little dramatic. Uh, and at this point in the story, I wept. Probably not for the same pain and suffering that Jesus felt in John eleven thirty five, 35, but I wept, I sobbed, and I did what probably none of you would ever do. I called my wife while she was at work expecting sympathy. <laughs> and she simply said, I'm so sorry, are you okay? Then she said goodbye to somebody who was walking down the hallway past her office. I thought she was telling me goodbye, so I hung up thinking, she really doesn't want to hear my story. It's time to move on. So I put my big boy pants on, and I grabbed the pipe, and I went to the hardware store and said, help. Some parts and some YouTube videos later, <laughs> to my surprise and probably yours, I fixed it. And the faucet is installed and not leaking yet. Many times my plans have been broken. Uh, a friend once told me that the funniest joke we can tell any, anyone, but especially God, is our plans. We make all these plans. We think that somehow we're in control. God has the most amazing plan for our lives. He has an amazing plan for your life. He wants us to live this life abundantly and free and open. Not shut off, not closed off. He wants us to be vulnerable, as scary and terrifying as it is. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 9, it says, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. We are struck down, but not destroyed. You see, God has given me opportunities on, across this country to coach, to work, to love, to be loved. Even being in Bolivar is an opportunity that I had to step forth to take. 
You see, he's blessed me with a wife that I couldn't have ever planned for. He's blessed me with stepchildren that I couldn't have ever planned for. He's blessed me with a baby coming in July that I definitely couldn't have ever planned for. There are opportunities here at the church that I never would have planned for. But God can use those opportunities as long as we're willing to let our doubts and fears aside, to use them and be fruitful for the kingdom. So messy, broken, desperate, snotty, weak, come before him. Hold your broken pipe and say, help. Wow, church family, that was awesome. That was inspiring. I know that over the course of this message uh, that the Holy Spirit has spoken to you, that in our time together, maybe it was a statement by a speaker here, a statement by a speaker here that just really resonated with you. And let me just tell you, that is God speaking to you, wanting you to take a next step in your spiritual journey in following Jesus. And so here's what we're going to do as we end our service today. I want you to pay attention to that voice. And would you commit whatever God has put on your heart to him? And so if you would, just bow your heads with me and let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for these five speakers. Lord, I, I thank you for what you're doing in their life. And Lord, how they've inspired us to be more, to take a next step with you. And so, Holy Spirit, I pray that that thing that you've put on our heart, Lord, would you just encourage us to take that next step? Help us to be bold with you in following after you. Lord, I pray for those who maybe have never taken that first step with you and that are ready to follow you for the rest of their days. And if that's you, wherever you're watching, you can give your life to Jesus right there, right now. And you can do that by just maybe just a simple prayer just like this. Lord Jesus, I'm ready to follow you the rest of my days. I'm done doing life my way. And so the best that I know how I give my life to you, forgive me my sin. Lord, be my Savior. Lord, I thank you for those who prayed this prayer. Lord, I pray you would encourage them. Lord, we love you and we seek to follow you the rest of our days. We love you and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Church, thank you so much for joining us. Before we leave, just a couple of quick reminders that next Sunday, May 24th, is our first service back on campus. So we invite you to come. Uh, we'll have our two services at 9.30 and 11. And so come, be a part. Now, if you still feel a little uncomfortable, maybe you're still uh, medically vulnerable, that's okay. It's okay to stay at home. We're gonna still offer our services online through Facebook and YouTube. And so just if where, however your comfort level, just be a part of our services uh, next week. And then finally, before we go, don't forget your tithes and offerings. Uh, you can give three different ways at the Heights. One, through mobile giving that you'll see the number there on your screen. Uh, second, you can give through our Heights website at theheightschurch.net. And then finally, by mail at P.O. Box 847. Again, church, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. God bless you. We'll see you next week.